Hello and welcome to episode... I have no idea. The damn camera started before me again. Wait a minute. 133. I'm not really ready. Okay. Let me just finish getting sorted. Since you've taken me off guard. I was going to try and do something with the blind. It's very sunny. Consequently, it's very dark in here. Is that any better? Maybe. If you can hear noises, it's Ewan getting ready for whatever it is Ewan's doing before he goes to work. So, I think he's going to the gym. So, as I say, I wasn't quite ready. But we're here now, so we might as well carry on. Before I do anything else, I have a spinning update. I've kind of got to grips with it. Please excuse the uh, connected fibre. So this is how I've done with this Turkish spindle. And underneath, if you look at the underneath actually, you can see. I'm spinning it quite consistently. But then what happens is when I, I wind it around here, can you see bits of it? unwind themselves driving me nuts so last Friday I went to my local yarn shop where I know there is a lady who spins and she said hmm Turkish spindle can be a little tricky why don't you try one of these first so this is a top whirl spindle um, and I got on with this much much better I have unfortunately chosen to use some very dark brown fibre but I hope you can see it's a little bit more consistent this one three days this one half an hour now admittedly I put some groundwork on on this one before I tried this but I'm finding this much easier to use so her advice, which was then backed up by my friend Gina, who commented under last week's podcast, was to get to grips with getting consistent on this one and then go back to trying this one. So that's what I'm going to do. Let me put these down. That was just a quick spinning update. And I did have a comment last week asking me why I wanted to spin when I already buy yarn and dye yarn. And it's like, because I want to and I'm nearly 60 years old and I can do what I like so there you go right before we go any further I'm going to attempt to do the draw for the um, third podiversary giveaway do not respond to anybody who messages you, emails you, contacts you, telling you you have won. I'm only, I forgot to say this last week, I'm only announcing the winners here. What you'll need to do if your name is um, drawn is message me either on Instagram. Details are down below, but it's amandajane.davies.58 or email me at mousesmakes at gmail.com. You need to contact me. I will not contact you. So don't fall for anybody messaging you saying they need some money for postage or anything else. You need to contact me. Right. Let's go for the first one. Shall we do book first? Here we go. Oh. Let's try. doing something okay oh, I don't know how well oh no that's very bad I'm having to peek oh 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 no what's that say Heather Wood 756 there you go Heather Wood, oh, sorry about the flare. 
Let's take that away. That's not very nice, is it? Heather Wood, the book is coming to you. Okay. Let's go again. And this time, let's draw for the pouch. I won't show it to you while we wait because that flaring on the screen is not very nice. thinking nearly there oh how fantastic Lynn Thomas Woo. I can't do it without that horribleness Lynn Thomas who gave me the lovely little stitch marker it is you you have won the pouch Okay, and finally, I'm sorry it's flaring so badly on the screen. I didn't realise it was going to do that. Let us draw for the bag. So now we wait. Neighbour's dog is barking. Still waiting. Ah, oh, here we go. Mara Luisis. No, Mara. Oh, I'm just going to show you. Mara Luisis, I think it is. Can you read that? Mara Luisis 5434. You have won the bag. Now I'm going to close this and put it away. Right, I have got two finished objects and I've left one over there, but I'm going to show you the first one. I've finished Dave's Musselburgh hat. This is actually the fourth one I've made for Dave. It is, I think, the twelfth one I've made altogether. Um, he requested this one in this yarn. I did ask him if he wanted a different hat for a change. But he said no, he wanted a Musselboro, he likes them. So let me poke it inside. I'd made him some socks a few weeks ago in this yarn and he liked it so much he wanted a hat, the same. Let me just wrestle it in. They call this on, on television dead air, I think. There's going to be a lot of dead air today, I think. friend Karen from Recreational Knitting could probably tell me that because I'm sure her husband used to work in TV as a cameraman or something possibly. Yes, so there's his hat. The yarn I used, I did it on a 3mm needle which is, if I'm doing a fingering, fingering weight muscle bra, I always use a 3mm needle. It's King Cole Zigzag in colour 3470 which is cocoa and I had this little bit left um, which is not very much bearing in mind the ball to begin with is 120 no 420 meters so I think this one might be a little bit longer than his others because they were done with 400 meter um, yarns just me tell you how much I've got left. I can't say that I'd ever noticed that King Cole zigzag was 420 metres before. Eight grams left, just over eight and a half. So yeah that's definitely going to be a bit longer than his other hats I think but that's okay I don't think he'll mind. So that's finish number one. Bear with me while I fetch finish number two. There's going to be a horrid noise. I have to move my little table so I can get up. Oh, God. Now I've waxed the radiator.
This is finish number two, which I had been going to put on, but I'm far too hot, as per usual. Last time you saw it, I was there. So I've done all of this. This is the Midsummer Haze Cow by Hoagie Locatelli. And I will be honest, I cheated and I didn't do the last pattern repeat because I felt, if I hold it against me, it was quite big enough. I will knit this again. Um, I very much enjoyed it. I used just over 100 grams of Cascade Heritage in silver grey, I think it's called. And I had a little over 88 grams left. So I, I only really used 10 and a bit grams out of this second skein. Yeah. It's quite an enjoyable knit. I don't know why I put off finishing it for so long. I will hopefully still get a little bit of wear out of it this year. Well, before the summer. Our well, it's sunny, our weather has turned quite cold again, so I think it will still be useful. So yeah, finished two things. Just going to have some water. Very thirsty. I'll tell you why I'm very thirsty in a minute. So Saturday, I attended a cast on party. In fact, I held a cast on party and then I attended another one. The main cast on party is held by Tonya of Calm as a Stitch and because she's in the US it doesn't start until 10am her time which is 5pm for us UK ladies and we are too impatient we can't wait till 5pm. So earlier on in the day we take it in turns to open a pre cast on party. Let me see if that doesn't help at all. Um, so it was my turn. I've got a feeling I did the last one. But it doesn't matter. I did this one. So I opened a room and we were we were UK ladies were on it until four. Then we had a break and then we joined the proper party. I was only going to cast on two things because I'd finished two things. So I wasn't going to increase my whip count, which at the moment, I promised Caroline I would have a count up and I forgot to, is standing at around 34, I think. Let me look. Twenty-two, including what I've cast on, of things that are not blankets, and twelve blankets. So thirty-six, Caroline. I miscounted. Thirty-six is my current number. I wasn't going to cast any more than two things on because I'd finished two things and then somebody commented and said reminded me that lovely Ruth of Ruth Loves to Knit says it's my knitting and I'll cast on if I want to and really I'm the only one setting my own rules so I'd lost the enthusiasm for knitting the things that I have cast on and I thought Do you know what someone else had commented and said They'll get done when they get done, and it's true. It doesn't matter if it takes me all the rest of this year, plus the rest of next year. It doesn't matter. What matters is I've cast on some new things, and it sparked off my interest in knitting stuff again, which is good, because I had just been, like, trudging my way through it just to get stuff finished. So it served a purpose. Anyway, I cast on four things, the first of which was this. Now there isn't a pattern for this, but it is 
kind of inspired by the Morrison scarf, which I made with one of my advents, you might remember. I say inspired by because I haven't really followed the pattern slavishly. I've cast on 88 stitches. You can't see very well because I've used black. Um, this is Cascade Heritage in black and I cast on 88 stitches and knit two inches because there's a rib at either end of the scarf. And then I changed it to using, I added on two more stitches so I've now got 90 which is the original stitch count of the scarf and is a nice width. I could have just carried on with the 88 but I thought adding in the extra two stitches would just give the rib a little bit more, it would be more cinched. It's two stitches. I don't know why I bothered. Now I'm telling you about it, I don't know why I bothered. But anyway, I did. So having cast on and knit the rib, I swapped to this yarn, which was a gift from my friend Jan, who has a podcast called Faithful Sheep. It might just be called The Faithful Sheep now. I'll link it below anyway. Um, and this is Nitpicks for Leachy. Oh, that's Cascade Heritage Band. Where's the band for this? Is that it? No. I'm very organised this morning, as you can tell. Yes, Nitpicks for Leachy. And the colourway is, oh, it's on the front, Red Rocks. <laughs> I knew it was written on there somewhere. So I have two 50 gram balls of this. And my plan is to use the whole 50 gram ball, swap back to black for the centre, use the other 50 gram ball, and then finish with a black ribbed cuff on the other side. That is my plan. So I should get a nice long scarf and this wool is so so soft. Obviously the Cascade Heritage, that didn't come out quite right, is also very very soft so I think it's going to be a really soft snuggly scarf. Sorry I've just realised that that's clicking away and it's probably very irritating if you have earphones in but I suspect I'm quite irritating anyway so it's par for the course. So that was my first cast on. And it took longer than you might imagine. That probably took me, admittedly, I wasn't knitting the whole time that I was on the pre-party because I had to tidy up because I couldn't work in the mess that I'd made. And I had to find some yarn and for something that I'd decided I was going to cast on during the pre-cast on party. So yeah, it that probably took me about an hour and a half of the four hours that I was on. So that was cast on number one. Cast on number two, I, I, my friend Sally says I cheated. I don't think I cheated because cast on number two is the Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West, which I've knit before and I forgot to bring the one I'd knit before but it begins with this eye cord, which takes some time and some perseverance. Now, I decided that because some of my friends, Tonya, like to um, shout random numbers at people when they're counting and put them off. And as I suffer from a word that I can't pronounce, Discalculia? And struggle with numbers anyway. That is not at all helpful. So I chose to do this during the break. So I didn't get the nap I was planning to have. I spent my time casting on this eye cord. And I have a very underwhelming amount of the shawl done so far. I have this much. There'll be more next week, I promise. 
would you like to see the pattern or do you all know what I'm talking about? I might as well just show you the pattern anyway, mightn't I? The pattern is not there because it is here. It's going to be one of those days. You'll have to bear with me. So, this is the pattern, which I'm sure you all know anyway. It was, I believe, the mystery shawl, the mystery knit along for 2020. It's the Stephen West, obviously. Um, I The first time I saw it, I saw Ellie from Craft House Magic. She was the first knitting podcast I ever found. I didn't know they existed. And she was knitting hers and I looked at it and I thought, oh, that is amazing. I could never knit that. And now I've done one and I'm knitting a second. Um, it's very well received. I wore it to the Southern Wool Show and got many compliments on it. And I wore it again at the weekend, just gone, when I went to Sodbury Yarnover. Um... I'd had five compliments on it before I'd even got through the door. So, yeah, it is quite spectacular. I'm knitting it this time. Last time I did black for the main colour with purple and green for the, the background colours. But this time I'm using a more summery colour scheme. So for the main uh, yarn... I'm using this grey, which is remarkably similar, a little bit darker than the grey I used for the Midsummer Haze, but this is actually my own hand dyed. Um, so this is kind of a tonal grey. I've got two of those. And then I've got, this is attached, so I've got to be a bit careful. This very pale pink. This medium sort of corally pink and finally this very bright, it's, it's not quite that fluorescent but it is almost as fluorescent as it looks on my screen. So those three are going to be um, the colours that the shawl cycles through as you move through it. It's looking really pale. It's a, got a little bit more colour than it does there. I think the others are causing it to blow out a bit. But yeah, so another slip extravaganza. That wasn't part of my plan. Um, I'd been planned to cast on the scarf. I just sh 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 just showed you. Um, and then during the pre-party, I thought I'd cast on the, the slip extravaganza because that yarn has actually been wound ready to knit that for two years. Um, I almost immediately when I finished the last one wound the yarn to knit the next one so I thought it was probably time I cast it on and the next thing I cast on again was something that I hadn't planned to make but it is off my make nine list. And again, it's something I've knit before. I'm going to show you the one I've knit before, first of all. This is the Exordium Shawl by Rebecca Picot. And this is my original version. And I knit this. I knit this in... Um, yarn from Ducky Darlings. Two absolutely beautiful yarns. The creamy one is Lamb Lotto and the darker one is Brew. Oh, just love them. And I never wear it because it doesn't really go with anything. I thought it would go with everything because it's got so many colours in the, the cream, in the Lamb Lotto. And every time I put it on with something, 
I think, oh, it doesn't really go. See, it should go really nicely with this T-shirt because there is a pink, very similar pink, in the Lamb Lotto. But somehow it doesn't, I think possibly because the brew is on the outside. I don't know. But it is one of my favourite shawls. It is one of my, f well, two of my favourite colours from Ducky Darlings. As you know, Hayley is one of my very favourite dyers. Um, and so it's a nice size for wearing round your neck like a scarf, which is what I generally do. So I thought I'm going to knit another one in colours that are possibly more um, compatible with my wardrobe. So I've cast on another one and I've cast it on with yarn of my own. I am so far this far with it. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Now I don't know if you can see I was talked out of using the colours that I had originally intended because they were too close in tone, colour, whatever. So I fished out this colour. Again, these are both my own hand dyed and this is one that got over dyed because it didn't meet my exacting specifications and so I just over dyed it and bunged it into my this is a reject so I'm going to keep it pile so there's that one which is just it's just a one of a kind and this darker color it's in this little thing I'll wrestle it out of there in a second oh, I'm getting very tangled up this one you can't really see that very well was a prototype of black diamond which came out very very dark and I thought it would be too dark for everybody but I absolutely loved it so I have been going to use this with what actually ended up being black diamond and I was told no there wasn't enough contrast so I wanted something kind of dark and moody and I thought the other one fit the bill. Um, if I'd had a skein more of this I would have used that but I didn't and I needed to start with that skein so I had to have something that I'd already got so I, I fished that one of a kind out. Um, I've been going to say something else and it's completely fallen out of my brain. The reason I'm so scatty today, even more than normal, is that I got very dehydrated. Um, I stayed up till three minutes past three Sunday morning on the party and I'd had a very, very small rum and coke. And a combination of the two things has made my body very angry with me. I felt absolutely dreadful on Sunday. I felt almost as dreadful yesterday. Today I feel only half as dreadful. But I think I'm still a bit dehydrated. And so that's why I'm drinking water. And I'm very scatty because I think my brain is full of toxins. What had I been going to say about this? I told you it was a, a black diamond prototype and a reject yarn and it's on my make nine list and I cannot remember for the life of me what else I was going to say. So yeah, Exordium Shaw, Rebecca Picot, much more um, fitting in with my wardrobe I think than the original. Oh, where have I put the original? It's on my knee, it's literally... see what I mean yeah I'm gonna put that away now so oh let me move that stitch marker I've got my my stitch marker from Lynn on here 
it was hitherto just marking the front but now I'm going to move it up so I know where I was when I showed you let's put it there okay okay and then finally something that I had intended to cast on was another breezeway tee and again this is something I've knit twice before in fact I was wearing one a couple of weeks ago and I'm using one of the yarn cakes stay there do not fall down the gap that I bought at the Sodbury yarn over oh it's the black and white picture how well you can see that it's a basic tea by Fogbound Knits and um, I'm experimenting with my smaller upper bust moving to a fuller bust recipe and this is a perfect uh, pattern to do that with because of how it's constructed and I can't really say much more of that because it is a paid for pattern. So I'm using this one of the yarn cakes. I bought two, if you remember. This one is Moonstone and it fades from kind of a denim blue to a dark brown. And I have got a fair amount done, but as is my usual. MO. I've got it on a very small needle and so it's a bit hard for you to see so obviously it's upside down but I've done this much that's the front no where are we yes that's the front this is the back it has got some short row shaping that's the back and let me see if I can stretch a bit out the colours are already changing does that show up I'm not sure it does very well on camera but yeah they're already darkening so that's been very hard to put down because it's quite exciting that the the colours are changing um if it works, I'm going to knit it again, probably in the purple cake that I bought. And because I'm messing with the pattern, I began to worry I hadn't got enough yarn. I'd got enough yarn if I knit the whole thing from my upper bust measurement, possibly enough if I knit it from my full bust measurement. But because I'm messing about with it, I was worried I was going to run out. So what I did was I contacted um, Yarn Mixology. I will link their website below. That's them there. And I asked, she, she does the, the mixed colour, the gradient cakes, but she also does, um, I think they call them pops. It's just one colour. And I ordered a brown to go on the end of this cake and a purple to go on the end of the other cake and she messaged me and said because I'd said they were to go with the moonstone and temptation she emailed me and asked if I would like her to make the whole cake in the last two colours rather than just one and I said yes please because obviously that's perfect if I haven't got enough in the cake itself it will fade slowly down and then just stay at the last colour for the last bit and I think that will look fine if I don't need to use them I'll just make one skein shawls with them um, there's 500 metres so I can easily do any of my favourite one skein shawls um, the Femme Reine by uh, Penny Baker uh, Sugar Plum Shawl by I think Mina Phillips I don't think I would do the Casapinka one. I can't think of the name um, because there are a lot of. You go through. Oh, I can't remember exactly now. 
No, it's not that one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the Hokey Locatelli one, whose name I can't remember either. Where you cross them over. I don't think I want to do that with this yarn because it's four threads and they're not plied together. They're just four threads. You do have to, when you're knitting, pay a little bit of attention because it's very easy to only get two or three of them and then you end up with a little loop and you've got to tink back and do that bit again. Yes, that was a lot of nonsense about nothing in particular. So, I do believe that's everything I had to tell you. There's nothing else written down, which doesn't really mean anything. So, ladies who... Um, whose names came up on my, my computer, if you would like to either email or message me on Instagram, I will get those prizes off to you. Um, and I think that is everything for this week. I should go, really. I'm very, very hungry. I'm sure there was something else I needed to say, and I cannot for the life of me... I'm doing my usual thing where I just scan round in the hopes that something reminds me. Oh! Somebody asked me last week what was in these bags. So, this bag, I actually told you... Woo! Did you see that move then? I thought it was coming down. It's coming down. Maybe I need to take some of the weight off that. Um, I told you that the blanket was in here the blanket is not in here this is full if i can show you without dropping them that's full of little balls of wool to go into the blanket into my fake battenberg which is in the bag that's on the top yeah let's go into this so that's what's there and they're there really because i couldn't think of where else to put them so they just got abandoned there this underneath also full of little tiny bits to go in there oh, the top of Yorick's skull is dropping down the back of the cupboard I'll rescue him and get a headache if that falls down there not that old skewer oh it's a bit chaotic this morning right that is everything, I think. Can't see anything that I was meant to tell you. And if there was anything, it's just going to have to wait till next week now. So, I'm going to go. Um, and I will see you next week. Where I will hopefully be a little bit less scatty. Um, and have some more progress on some things to show you. <laughs> Doubt anything will be finished. Um... I'm obviously going to want on my want to work on my four new things, but my plan is now to work through my list of of whips that came over from 2023. Just work through it methodically. So the next thing to come out is my painting bricks shawl, which is similar in construction to the slip extravaganza. So that might be a slow process because I might get a bit bored doing two things that are very similar. We'll see right then definitely going now i will see you next week until then happy knitting bye guys